Hey, peers. Welcome back to the Modern Myths Podcast. I'm Vince Ventura, Artistic Director of 12 Peers Theater, and your host for the Modern Myths Podcast. Today, we thought we'd take some questions from you, specifically about Cry in the Shower by Liz Layton. We also got a lot of questions about the podcast in general. So I thought we'd take some time to explain how we got the idea for the podcast, how we picked the plays, what the recording process is like, and then take another couple of questions about Cry in the Shower specifically. First and foremost, the most frequently asked question that we get at 12 Pierce Theater about the Modern Myths podcast is, where did the idea for the podcast come from? We were doing a play um, probably in 2013 uh, as part of our Summer Scribes reading series, which was a a new play reading series as well, that wasn't very active. It was two characters sitting around and talking. And um, I got the idea, man, we could record these, not like radio plays, but like being at a, a play reading from the comfort of your own home. So that idea I kicked around for a little while and we did some market research and we thought about it long and hard and the time commitment that it would take to launch a podcast. And here we are today. We think it's a great way to get exposure for playwrights, maybe playwrights you've never heard of before, and also a really great way to get people interested in theater if they haven't been to the theater or maybe can't get to the theater. You know, we noticed that younger audiences have so many options for entertainment, and they have so many options for entertainment on demand, in their pockets, Netflix, streaming video, and so much that we can absorb at one time, at any given time, on our schedule. And that's a very immediate way to interact with entertainment. Theater is also very immediate. There's one actor in a room with you, and that performance is only witnessed by those people in that space at that time. That being said, it's not the sort of immediacy that people are interested in so much right now. So we tried to come up with an idea that would make theater immediate in the sense of on-demand entertainment and a way to reach people that we never could get into our theater on a normal, in, in, for a normal show, people across the world. And that's really the most exciting thing about the Modern Myths podcast for me is that we can reach such a large audience and make such a difference and get such exposure for these playwrights. And so I think it's just a really beneficial thing for both 12 Peers Theater and for the playwrights we're working with this season. The next question we get a lot of uh, in the past few weeks is, how did we pick these plays? And there are a lot of plays. 13 plays, is a, it's a lot. Um, we had over 800 submissions, and we have a wonderful literary manager, Matt Henderson, who who did a great job of curating all of the submissions and assigning them to our team of readers We had about 35 people working with us, and they were each given a certain number of plays. Each play was read by two different readers, and then these readers would pick their favorite out of the group that they were assigned. So once we had the the final uh, 35 or so plays, um, I read all of these, Matt read all of these, and Sarah Fisher, our producing artistic director, also read all of the plays, along with Marcus Savage, who's one of our producers. Uh, We each picked our top three, I think I picked four, um, to give us our final 13. And then all of those went by me, they were approved by me, they were approved by Matt Henderson. We kind of came to a a consensus about what we wanted to present this season. It was also very important for us to highlight female playwrights. Our main stage shows are two male playwrights, and we thought that it was only responsible to make sure that we were giving female playwrights uh, a voice in, in our podcast series at least. Another question we get a lot is, how do we rehearse our podcast, and how do we record our podcast? And that's uh, sort of the same question. Each of these plays is rehearsed one day and recorded uh, in one day, typically over the span of about eight total hours. So it's important to us that our actors are on point, our directors are prepared, and uh, we hope there are no disasters with our recording equipment, because we don't have a lot of time to produce these plays. Um, we record every other weekend. So, you know, this week, uh, this past weekend, we did not record, but next week we will be, we will be recording another play. Basically, um, we have three recorded so far with a fourth, like I said, coming this weekend. And we'll probably have everything recorded by July. Uh, we'll be doing interviews with the playwrights as we go. But, yeah, we hope to record as many of these uh, as quickly as possible so that we can open up submissions for next season's podcast series and... Uh, and start reading the next round of submissions from the awesome playwrights who were so gracious enough to to submit to us. 
Um, we got a, a great question about Cry in the Shower specifically. Um, how did the actors play such a variety of ages? Which is a great question. Um, we don't have the ability to show people that, you know, Lena is eight years old or Chantel's 19 years old. Uh, we really didn't have any kind of way to physicalize it. So it was a lot, um, a lot of voice acting and a lot of dependence on Sarah Fisher, um, Sarah Ashley Fisher, who played Lena. A lot of uh, depending on her to portray a younger version of Lena. A lot of dependence on Diana Ift, which uh, she is fantastic as well. But honestly, and surprisingly enough to me, the biggest challenge with the aging of the characters came with Mrs. Donahue. In the script, not a lot is given about her, except, you know, she's close to retiring. And, you know, we drew con conclusions from the dialogue, of course, but we sort of had to work backwards and figure out how old she was in the first scene, based and then how much time has passed and how close is she to retiring. So we had to do a little detective work with her and... Um, I mean, I think the result is 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 good. And what's interesting uh, also about Mrs. Donahue is that the aging came a lot out of the way her perspective changes, not just how um, not just how much she's physically aged. So you know, her her mindset has shifted, and she says as much. So that was also something that helped us along. Lastly, why did the playwright choose to set the play in the time period that they did? Uh, the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, you know, Lena really comes of age in the 80s, and um, I can relate to that personally. I am a child of the 80s. But I asked Liz, and, you know, she said she was very familiar. She wanted to keep it contemporary, and um, she was really interested in the structure of the play and the time jumping. So the 70s and 80s and, and Lena's coming of age then really came about to service the play being as contemporary as possible. So I thought that was a great question. This is not a normal play structure, uh, and I think it's used really effectively. Um, telling the story out of sequence makes some of the events hit harder whenever you get to see those scenes, specifically Lena getting spit on by the boys in her class. All right, peers, those are the questions that we have for you today. I know it's a short episode, so keep your questions coming. You can email them to info at 12peerstheater.org. That's number 12, P-E-E-R-S-T-H-E-A-T-E-R dot O-R-G. Or you can uh, send them to us via Facebook or Twitter. Stay tuned next week for Caliban by Michael Amon. It's a really great play directed by our literary manager, Matt Henderson. You won't be disappointed. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm Vince Ventura, and this has been episode four of the modern myths podcast the modern myths podcast is produced by 12 pierce theater executive producer vince ventura producers sarah fisher matt henderson and marcus savage music by kevin mcleod in competech.com stage directions read by rick siflinski Chantel, diana ift lena sarah ashley fisher nurse and mrs donahue Ashley Rice. Recording location generously provided by TimeSys Corporation. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review.